everybody. Welcome to Hook, Line, and Thinker, how to create engaging videos that grab your learner's attention. I'm Chris Borger, instructional designer with the Center for Teaching and Learning. And in today's webinar, you're going to learn techniques to make your educational videos more engaging through creating hooks and by modifying your visual pacing. Plus, later on, I'm going to tell you the secret to the ideal length for your educational video. So stay tuned for that. Start things off with just a little bit of about my background in video production and engagement. I've worked here for CTL for the past couple of years, making educational videos as an instructional designer. Uh, in the past, I've also worked at BBC and Oilers Nation, making some comedy and some sport themes content. And has worked, uh, I've worked as a professional comedic improviser for the past decade as well, with a few different theater companies in town. So you may have seen me do an improv show or seen one of my comedy videos before, uh, but I'm really passionate about engagement and education. So I'm really happy to be able to bridge those two worlds together and pull on some techniques from the world of uh, engagement and entertainment today. So let's take a little look at our scope for our webinar today. Today, we're going to be focusing on hooks and pacing. So by the end of this webinar, you should be able to define what a hook is in relation to educational videos and identify the various types. As well, you should be able to describe the techniques that can be used to vary the visual pacing of your educational videos. We'll talk a little bit more about visual pacing and what that means later on. Let's get started, though, with hooks. Let's talk about what is a hook. So the question is, creating a hook, what's the catch? hopefully your student's attention. Uh, a hook is your first opportunity. It's your first impression, and it should live in the first 15 seconds of your educational video. It's your chance to make a really good first impression that captivates your learners and gets them excited about this video. If you think about the start of your favorite movie or even your favorite TV show, uh, you will think, and you'll see in your mind's eye as you imagine this, uh, that the first thing you'll see is a really captivating scene right off the top. You get into action almost immediately. And then you make your way to the maybe the more boring credit section after we see that engaging first little scene. So if you remember uh, movies in the time of yore, like The Sound of Music, they would start off the movie with like, a six minute long kind of boring credit sequence, and then we'd get to the movie. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna think of modern movies and TV shows where right off the top, we have a great hook that captivates people. So let's look at the different types of hooks that we can have and get a little bit more specific here. The first type of hook is a clearly stated value. It's really straightforward and it's simply you telling your learner what the value of this video is. What are they gonna learn? I actually started off our webinar today with a clearly stated value hook where I said, in this webinar, you're going to learn ways to make your videos more engaging through creating hooks and varying your visual pacing. So there's an example of a clearly stated value right off the top of a video. The next type of hook is a preview. And this is when you show a little something of what's coming on. You make a promise of what you're going to see later on in this video. I also had a preview off the top. I said, stay tuned because you're going to find out the ideal length for your educational video. And that little promise, uh, you can then satisfy your learners later on when you, you live up to that promise and do what you say you're going to do. If you're making, say, a biology video, you might say, and later in this video, I'll tell you why prolactin is sometimes called the bad boy of the endocrine system or something like that based on your content. There is a third type of hook I want to talk about, and that's the sneak peek. Now, this is where you show the most climatic or compelling moment right off the top of this video. If you think of a Quentin Tarantino movie, you always see that huge explosion, that huge climatic moment right off the top. And then you see the sequence of events that led to that. So that's a great way to just use that most exciting piece of information right off the top. Now, in educational videos, the sneak peek can be limited by the content of your video. Maybe all of your content is kind of hitting the same note. Maybe it not, there's not one piece of information that is super climatic or compelling. So it can be a little bit harder to pull off in an educational video. So a clearly stated value and a preview might be a little bit more appropriate for you. But if you can pull off that sneak peek, if you do have that juicy piece of content, show that right off the top and you'll hook your learner's attention and they're gonna stay paying attention and captivated throughout the duration of the video. So those are our hooks. We're gonna move on now to visual pacing and talk about that a bit. The big question of visual pacing is what visual stimulation can we provide? We can do this, we can vary our visual pacing uh, of what we're showing on screen in two different kinds of categories. 
The first category would be pattern interrupts. That's showing some B-roll, showing camera angle changes, little subtle uh, directional cuts. Uh, these are all ways to keep your viewer's attention without needing to change to a new topic. Little subtle changes that add some variety and a little bit of spice to your video. Uh, the next uh, type or uh, variety of visual pacing is signaling, also known as cueing. And that's the use of on-screen text or symbols or graphics or even stock footage to uh, convey that important information in a new way. Again, some examples could be two or three keywords, uh, a change in color, or even a symbol that draws attention to a region on the screen could act as signaling or cueing. Uh, Meyer and Morono and Dick Koning in 2009 have shown that the use of signaling improves students' ability to retain and transfer new knowledge from animations. And then in 2012, Ibrahim et al. also showed that these effects extend to video. So not only are you making your videos more captivating and engaging your audience, you're also helping your students digest that information and uh, take in that content through signaling. So we have pattern interrupts and we have signaling. Let's look into pattern interrupts a little bit more. So what can we show on camera? What can we show when we're doing our educational videos, when we're lecturing? We recommend that you show yourself. It's supported by Meyer's theory and design principles that showing yourself helps captivate your learners. And using a conversational style as opposed to a more formal style is also recommended. It can seem uh, uh, attractive to perhaps to write a script for yourself because you know exactly what you're going to say. I would encourage you instead to speak off of notes because when you're speaking off of notes, it makes you think a little bit more about what you're saying and you're gonna have a little bit more emotion, more enthusiasm, and you're gonna be speaking in the moment more than you might be reading off a script, which can be dangerous because sometimes we can get a little bit robotic when you're reading off the script. So using that uh, conversational style is a great tip as well. As well, speak quickly and enthusiastically. In their study examining student engagement with MOOC videos, Guo and colleagues observed that student engagement was dependent on the narrator's speaking rate, with student engagement increasing as the speaking rate increased alongside it. You'll notice that I'm speaking pretty quickly. That is on purpose. I have a lot of information for these 15 minutes. But I also want to keep my pace fairly high for engagement purposes. Moving on now with visual pacing, we're going to continue with pattern interrupts. You can show yourself, but you can also show yourself from various angles. You can accomplish this by simply filming yourself with a second camera. If you're filming yourself give a lecture, maybe you could use your, your laptop camera and then use a webcam uh, on the side or another smartphone at the same time. And that gives you some variety and some options of how you want to show yourself as you're speaking. I'm gonna just show you now on iMovie, uh, a little example. I'll be doing some iMovie examples over the next few minutes, uh, just because it, it comes with Mac products and it's a fairly user-friendly uh, editing system. So here I have a clip of myself speaking that I have filmed just with the camera I'm looking at right here on my laptop. And then I've attached a webcam to my uh, little double extra second monitor there to see uh, myself from a different angle. So I'm speaking about the same information here, but we just get to see a new angle. And that adds a little bit of variety to our visual pacing. Now, you might not want to film yourself with a second camera. Maybe you only have one camera. Maybe you don't have the time or patience to set up a second camera and deal with that. You can still achieve this effect with one camera. And that would be by using a punch in shot uh, option effect. So I'll show you what that looks like now. We're gonna be using the crop to fill feature. So let's go back to our first little clip here. Let's say halfway through this clip, I wanna do a tight zoom in. So I'm just gonna split our clip here and then select this second half, go up to our little crop feature. And I wanna select crop to fill. This will give me a new window that I can adjust and whatever is in this window will become the entire frame. So say I wanna punch in on my face a little bit, get a little bit of that zoom effect without shooting a second camera. I'm gonna apply that. And now we'll see that from these two clips, we have a little zoom that's just artificially made. Uh, and there you have it. A little bit closer of a shot that we can get by using the crop to fill option. There is another option as well to get this effect without using a second camera. And that's the Ken Burns effect named after documentary director Ken Burns. This is a really cool thing in iMovie you can use. Again, you just go right back up to that little crop area where we punched in. But instead of crop to fill, I'm gonna select Ken Burns. Now I will have two windows, a starting window and a finishing window. 
The uh, frame will start in the starting frame and it'll end in the finishing frame. So right now we have a little bit of a zoom out and a pan to the bottom right. I'm gonna say that I just want a little bit of a pan from left to right. So I'll make my first box there. I'll make my second box the same size roughly, but a little bit to the right. I'll say yes. And now we'll see in this clip that we just get a little bit of movement from left to right. B and C. And that makes your shot a little bit more dynamic and brings it to life. Now the Ken Burns effect is also very useful if you're showing a still image. And we'll get to that in a little bit later. Looking at Ken Burns on a still image is really neat. So those are our different pattern interrupts. You can show yourself, show yourself from a different angle, but there is another category of varying our visual pacing, of course, signaling and cueing. So let's talk about that a little bit more. The first way we can use signaling is to show relevant text, uh, show a few keywords of whatever you're speaking about, and those few keywords helps cognitive signaling. Now you have an option. You can either overlay this directly on your video, or it can be its own unique slide. So let's take a look at that really quickly. Let's say over this first clip, I wanna have a few keywords. I'm gonna go up to titles. You have a lot of options. I'm just gonna select this first one here and simply drag it on top of my video. The title will now be overlaid right here. You can adjust the length of how long you want those words to show up. Let's say I only want it for a few seconds and I wanna change it. So I'll type in a few keywords. There we go, beautiful. And now we'll have a few keywords simply appear over my face as I'm speaking about them. If you like, you can also make this, uh, the few keywords or that relevant text be its own actual slide. To do that, you just drag the clip down where you want it to exist. And now we'll go to fade to black and we'll see those few keywords, but as their own, uh, as their own entire okay. screen. B and Fantastic. Now there is a third option as well. Maybe you want not the, the text to be overlaid, but you still want the audio, the narration from your video. To accomplish that, you'd simply go to your video, detach the audio, and then drag our video back. And whatever video you erase will be filled in by now our few keyword sign or a title, but we're keeping that audio narration from the video. So that's another option that you have there. So that's some ways that we can overlay text onto our videos uh, and use signaling. But we can show more than just keywords. We can also show relevant images. And providing visual elements that add to the lesson don't only promote student understanding, but also engagement with the lesson. There's many open source images you can find at pexels.com. It's a wonderful website. They have stock footage as well too, and a lot of great images that you can download and use for free. I wanna speak quickly just about the matching modality. That is what we're doing when we're signaling. The matching modality is the process of using both the audio channel and the visual channel to convey new information, ensuring that the content presented in each channel matches each other. Using both channels to convey appropriate and complementary information has been shown to increase students' retention and ability to transfer information by Meyer and Monroe in 2003. And it was also shown to increase student engagement by Thompson et al. in 2014 and Guao et al. in 2014 as well. So again, using signaling not only makes your videos more engaging, but helps students digest and transfer that knowledge. We're gonna look over now. I have a stock image that I have gotten from pexels.com. Just someone giving a little video lecture. I feel like that's appropriate. Uh, making sure that we're using appropriate and relative image, uh, re um, yeah, appropriate images, because if you have a great image of a cat that you love and you wanna throw it in your lecture because you think it'll make it more exciting, but it doesn't match your content, it'll actually act as more of a distraction. So ensure that the images that you use or the stock footage you use is relevant to your content. I'm gonna just drop this in here. And now what we would have is just seeing this image for four seconds, we can see that's our length. And you can see that the Ken Burns effect is also applied to this image. That was when we had those two different frames. So when that is applied to an image, again, it adds a little bit of life to our image. We'll see what that looks like here and you get a slight pan, which just kind of creates a little bit more life and adds to your visual pacing. Uh, as well, if you want this image to appear as you're speaking, you could just get rid of your title and drag it over. And now we would see this image as we're hearing the narration from your video. So you have options of what you're seeing and what your students are hearing. Moving on now, 
I promised you in my uh, top of the video that I would let you know the ideal length for your educational video. So let's look at this chart here. Guao and colleagues examined the length of time students watch streaming videos within four edX MOOCs, and they analyzed the results from 6.9 million video watching sessions. And they observed that the median engagement time for students, or for videos rather, that were six to nine minutes in length was near 100%. So based on this research, Keep it short, ideally in sections that are nine minutes or less. If you have a lecture that's maybe say 70 minutes, that's okay. Just break it up into shorter segments. You could break that video into 10 seven minute segments. And as a cool bonus, you can actually add hooks onto the end of your videos as well too. Say you're at the end of your second video of seven, you can say, thanks for watching video number two of seven and stay tuned because in number three, I'm gonna let you know why the Incan empire had huge influence in the world of pottery. Whatever your content might be, you can always add those hooks in and keep your videos ideally under nine minutes in length. Let's take a little recap over everything we've talked here today. We started off talking about hooks and the different types. We have the clearly stated value where you straight up tell your learner what is the value of your educational video? What are they getting out of it? The preview where you make that little promise and let them know what they can expect later on. Or a sneak peek where you show that big climatic moment right off the top. Remembering that can be limited based on your content. So the clearly stated value and preview may be more appropriate for you. Pacing, we talked about the two categories being pattern interrupts and signaling. Pattern interrupts, remembering you can show yourself from different angles. You can do that punch in shot using crop to fill. You can use the Ken Burns effect and get a little bit of movement or a pan on yourself as well, which is also great. As well, using signaling or cueing, remembering you can show uh, relevant text, uh, keywords or stock footage or even relevant animations to help engage your students and help them process the information you're giving them. Finally, we recommend that you keep it short with ideal segments being nine minutes or less based on our research. I'm just going to show here quickly some resources and references. I use some uh, a blog from some video producers as well. This article at the bottom here, assessing the impact on educational video on student engagement, critical thinking and learning, the current state of play was very helpful with this presentation. So if you're looking for some further reading, I would point you in these directions. We are going to open up now to about a 15 minute question section. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Hook, Line and Thinker, how to create engaging videos that captivate your students. Thank you.